Hello, greetings. Good morning. Morning. Did anyone uh, post the meeting notes into the chat yet? I don't think so. I'll do that. Oh, thanks. I just got it, Taylor. Yeah, you're welcome. Would you like to lead today, Bill? Sure. And just so people know, uh, we'll probably wait till five after before we get started so people have time to join. Please add yourself to the meeting notes. And if you have any topic you'd like to discuss, you can put it in the uh, agenda area. Of the meeting notes. Hey, Nikolai. Oh, ho. So thanks for everyone that's joining right now. If you can just add your name to the uh, meeting minutes and add any agenda items you'd, you'd like to talk about, uh, we'll get started in about a minute here. Okay, it's five after, so we can probably get started. Um, so welcome everybody to the Telecom User Group meeting. We meet uh, on the first Monday of every single month. And if you want to add your name and any agenda items to the meeting minutes, you can always do that in this Google Doc. Um, so with that being said, before we jump in, is there anything that anyone would like to add to the agenda? Okay, um, great. So thanks everyone that is showing up. So just a reminder about upcoming events. Uh, the CNF Working Group meets every week on Mondays at 1600 UTC. Um, KubeCon Europe uh, just passed and there's a bunch of great recordings from uh, about telecommunications and cloud native uh, telecommunications industry. The videos are now up on YouTube. Um, the KubeCon North America is coming up in this fall and located alongside it will be Open Networking and Edge Summit uh, and Kubernetes on Edge Day. And there's more information in the links here. Um, so with that, uh, today we have Natish to talk about Orchestra. 
which is a cloud native release orchestration lifecycle management platform for fine grained orchestration for groups of interdependent applications. Um, yeah, Nitish, uh, would you like to take over? Hey, uh, thanks, Phil. Yeah, let me share my screen. Right. Let me know if you can see uh, the presentation. Yep, we can see it. All right, perfect. Uh, hi, folks. Uh, my name is Nitesh. Uh, I'm uh, I'm a senior software engineer at Microsoft, a newly formed team called uh, Azure for Operators. Uh, I'm going to talk about an open source project that I've been working on for the past year, uh, along with the team, uh, which is called Azure Orchestra. Orchestra is an orchestration platform that's uh, built for system level releases of uh, complex mission critical applications. Uh, which can also be seen as a uh, tightly coupled Helm application because the delivery mechanism is Helm charts today when we deliver our apps to our customers. Um, so previously I was a technology architect, uh, the office of the CTO at the Firm Networks. The Firm Networks was acquired by Microsoft uh, early last year. Um, I'm also a Kubernetes enthusiast. Uh, I, I've been working with Kubernetes for the past three to four years now. Uh, prior to joining the, the office of the CTO, I was working with service meshes and this was uh, Istio to, uh, to support our 5G platform. So using all the features from the service mesh. Um, I'm also an avid gopher. And the uh, funny thing about me is that I love to uh, hoard swag. My entire wardrobe is just graphic tees from KubeCon and GopherCon. So uh, talking about the uh, couple of topics today, I'll keep it short. Uh, but uh, I do, I, I do uh, wish to show you a demo of Orchestra with a slightly less complex app as compared to network functions that we that we ship to our customers. So uh, as an overview, um, Orchestra is, is an open source project. It didn't start as something that was open source. It was uh, kind of tailored to, um, I'm, I'm going to say Affirm Networks right now because that's where we started our journey. Now it's Microsoft. Um, so it was tailored to our workloads and how we ship our network functions that we build, which are 5G core network functions, which are sold uh, or rather shipped to service providers. But uh, over time, we kind of realized uh, there were components in here that would be of uh, some benefit to the rest of the Kubernetes community and uh, started abstracting out pieces that that were were not specific to the affirmed workloads. And we, we built uh, orchestra out of those abstractions. Uh, the primary goal of the platform is uh, release orchestration of uh, tidy, like uh, of highly dependent applications, so groups of applications. Uh, release orchestration would be the rollouts, uh, rollbacks, and then you have the lifecycle management, which would be around uh, watching the state of the system, uh, our network functions and other components and uh, auto remediation on failures, going back to the last uh, successful deployment and everything would, everything should be zero touch. And like I said, it's a, it's a group of Helm applications. So uh, think of it as a bunch of Helm, Helm artifacts, Helm charts that are your applications and a lot of these Helm charts can also have sub charts, which could be microservices that uh, power your your network function. The the operator is cluster scoped. It it doesn't work across. Uh, it's not a multi cluster solution, though there are some uh, th th there is some work in progress to kind of build an abstraction on top of Orchestra to to make this multi homed across multiple clusters. But this one just focuses on a single cluster and deploying components on, on the one Kubernetes cluster. Uh, the architecture, uh, it's 
the the whole solution is built uh using some popular cncf uh projects we have argo workflows that lets us do some uh dependency based workflows so you have dag based workflows and you have uh chart museum and helm which are used as as your helm registry and helm being your vehicle of delivery um uh, and helm controller to kind of automate the whole helm operations so helm controller has some nifty features where it can do remediation for you it's it's a declarative spec you no longer have to deal with uh, uh, imperative com commands using the helm cli to deploy your applications so orchestra itself is built using the uh, cube builder project it's written in go and it leverages the the official client go and controller on time library so so no surprises there it uses what cube builder provides um the the uh the input to orchestra is a custom resource uh called application group and it's it's a collection of applications uh with dependencies mentioned amongst them so so the primary use case uh is is for the in service upgrades of mission critical systems and especially uh as we are in the uh, telco group it's it's around the 5g core network function so uh we we build a, a bunch of network functions that we do not manage uh and these these network functions are are kind of delivered over an air gapped environment and you no longer have any visibility so you need something to do zero touch deployments you need it to be reliable and uh, completely automated so so th that's the main use case when we uh, when we build our applications is that you have your you have your network functions but you also have a whole bunch of supporting components that uh, as isvs we have to provide uh, which may or may not be something that the customer is going to manage for us so you have to build an entire group of application supporting components infra components that need to be shipped along with the nfs uh, i was i was listening to uh, a session from the previous meeting and there was a line in there that caught my attention network functions are not just helm applications so there are more than that it's not like the enterprise world where you can have a single chart uh, for a single application so it's a little more complex um so another use case of orchestra was to provide uh rollout strategies you have your kubernetes rollout the standard rollouts uh but we want to enhance that especially in mission critical systems like uh 5g you want to provide canary and blue green deployments so uh, orchestra can leverage some service mesh features behind the scenes to do canary and blue green deployments uh and uh, i think the the plugin ecosystem kind of uh, allows uh, allows users to build custom strategies for rollouts as well so you can you can build your entire pipeline on how you want to roll your application out including uh any kind of uh, telemetry data that you want to look at that's not supported by uh, the service meshes or rather the progressive delivery frameworks um so another feature is the auto remediation so as as soon as a failure is detected uh, orchestra is capable of remediating the errors and uh, rolling back to the last successful spec if any uh, auto remediation lets you fail fast uh so you can catch errors quickly and rather, rather than cause a lot of disruption you can you can just roll back to your last working set of applications there's two plan components uh, that we're working on uh, planned and rather they actually start we've kicked it off uh, last week we're going to do uh, orchestra with support quality gates uh, we would use quality gates for promotions manual and automated kind of gives you control over how you how you uh, release your applications across the customers network so it could be uh, the the staging labs canary labs and all the way to the production labs um and uh, continuous testing as an integrated part of orchestra so rather than uh, having your own uh test infrastructure running outside of uh 
outside of your Kubernetes orchestrator, I mean, rather the release orchestrator, you would have the continuous testing built into these rollouts. So along with uh, automated canary analysis, orchestra would also do its own analysis, any custom metrics that it needs to look at. So, so the 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 reason why it's it's so complex is uh, why network functions are so complex is because they rely on a lot of uh, infra and pass components that that are specific to the vendor's network function. Different vendors are going to deploy their network functions on a single uh, or across the network of a customer's cluster, so a provider's cluster. And everyone has to bring their own supporting components. So, so we just because of that, we st we start uh, having tight dependencies. So really complex dependencies between these applications and all the supporting components. So here, I just show an example on how we deploy our workloads. But we have uh, strong de hard dependencies on some RBAC policies that need to be. Uh, configured before anything else can be deployed. These aren't these aren't pods that microservices that converge. These are uh, base resources that you need to set up before anything else can be started. Similarly, you have OPA that you need for mutation and validation. So these webhooks need to be up and running before anything else can start. Metal LB is another case when you're doing this on bare metal servers. Uh, bare metal clusters, and then uh, we do leverage uh, Istio service mesh, which means the the service mesh needs to be up before you can start any of the network functions because of the whole uh, sidecar injection approach and configuration of Envoy. And uh, amongst, there's there's other components to observability, security that we need uh, that we need set up before uh, our NFs can be spun up. So this kind of uh, drove us to the part that we need to we needed to automate the whole solution on deploying things in in a particular order following a dependency graph so so some of the features of orchestra is uh, that it's built for kubernetes it uses the operator pattern to uh, deploy controllers to um, to uh, to Kubernetes cluster, completely uh, declarative because of the custom resource approach. You provide the state that you want to be in, and the controller reconciles and gets you gets you to that state. And it's uh, GitOps compatible. Kind of, uh, it can plug into any uh, GitOps framework. Any so things like Argo CD, Flux CD. Uh, so it it's 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 pretty much agnostic to it. Uh, all we need is that custom resource to be deployed in the cluster, and the orchestra takes it from there. The way the way it works is by generating uh, DAG-based workflows. Uh, this is where we leverage Argo workflows, and uh, what what orchestra can do is one our applications or AKA the Helm charts themselves can have dependencies. Uh, Amongst them, so 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 you you could you could think of the of the first layer as the infra components, the first set of layers, and then you have the as you go through that the final thing is your network functions or a set of dependent network functions that are being deployed. So so it it renders a DAG based workflow for these applications as an optional for us. It's kind of a mandatory feature. Is it also does. Uh, DAG-based workflows for the subcharts that are com contained within the application chart. So we have a lot of uh, supporting, or rather, uh, comprised of a lot of uh, microservices within an application within an NF chart. So it uh, we we deploy those uh, subcharts. So those as uh, Helm subcharts, and they need to be coordinated as well. I should take that back. They don't need to be coordinated, but when you do in-service upgrades, uh, it's it's good to have them ordered following a DAG where the most crucial elements uh, go get updated first or last, however you want it, so, so that you can reduce the blast radius when things go wrong. So you, you catch the uh, issues early and then you roll back rather than having everything uh, kind of blow up at the same time. Uh, the reason this is important in the service provider world is because uh, 
they're not going to do continuous deployment as is done in the enterprise world. It's not uh, take updates as they come in and roll out applications. Instead, what we have realized and after talking to our partners is that they would do it on a schedule, which means more than one application infra component uh, could be ready with upgrades uh, when, whenever they, they schedule the, the releases. Uh, which means it's it's not it's not just one application going in. There's a whole bunch of uh, Helm charts being upgraded along with, say, the service mesh and observability components, security components. So so just one the application DAG helps with that, where the DAG is always uh, followed. You you honor the dependency tree and deploy the infra components first, and then your applications come in. And the subcharts, again, we, we break it down so that you can catch any failures at the microservice level. Uh, so so I, I made a mention to the GitOps frameworks. It plugs into any uh, CSAD framework. Uh, you can also connect it to, you can do it through QCuttle as well. So uh, the, the plugin ecosystem, is uh, we, you bring your own executor container image. So the way it works today is uh, each of the DAG nodes are responsible for generating a custom resource that's picked up by Helm controller. Uh, the custom resource is called Helm release. And uh, it's, 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 it's uh, very similar to what you would do on a Helm CLI command. You provide the values, you provide uh, any any flags that Helm needs and Helm controller would reconcile and make sure it does all the Helm actions that you need. So so today it just uh, uh, just deploys the Helm release object and waits for the status before uh, the workflow node succeeds. But you can bring your own uh, workflow container where you could do a lot 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 of other things. So you could go in and look at uh, monitors and uh, monitor the state for a bit before deeming the node a success and moving on to the next node in the DAG. So it provides a safe and reliable zero touch uh, system for end service upgrades. Uh, and th this, is, this is a simple example that I'll be demoing. Uh, we, we do our upgrades following the forward uh, workflow, but the, the reversal is not a, a blanket rollback. Uh, everything won't be rolled back to the to the previous versions altogether. So instead, it reverses the workflow workflow again, honoring the the dependencies, and starts uh, starts either either if this is a delete, then it starts deleting everything in the reverse order, or if it's a rollback, it does the same thing. So our our ecosystem is becoming uh, larger every day. We're we just introduced. Uh, uh, we we just spoke with the captain team, and we're making. Uh, we we started the integration there, and that's uh, captain is another CNCF project that can do uh, validation and quality gates. So captain would be an integral part of uh, orchestra uh, over the next few months as we work on it, and then captain itself could leverage progressive delivery frameworks. While orchestra outside, uh, orchestra can do this without Captain as well. So we're going to put up some examples of using Argo rollouts, which is which leverages Istio uh, to do some progressive delivery and uh, automated analysis to to promote your applications. So so this is our road roadmap. Like I said, uh, Captain's the first item in our uh, roadmap, and then we have Argo rollouts as an example as well that will be added. So you can you can uh, get to the GitHub uh, repo following these links, and we do have official docs as well, uh, especially for uh, admins and uh, contributors who who are interested in contributing. There is a whole bunch of resources on the website that you can use to get yourself set up and uh, start contributing if you wish to. So let me quickly jump to a demo. Do we have enough time? Yeah, we do. Okay, perfect. So here. Uh, 
right so so what we have here is uh, i'm gonna just quickly show you our application group so so this is our custom resource that orchestra picks up and uh, you can see that it just has a list of applications so so this is your application group with two applications you have ambassador and uh, book info is is uh, kind of based on the Istio example where uh, the book info app has a whole bunch of microservices, uh, product page reviews, ratings, and details. So these are treated as subcharts in the application chart. And uh, in this example, book info is dependent on ambassador, which means ambassador should be spun up and rolled out before book info can be started. So we have to make sure that everything comes up and only then book info gets kicked off. So within uh, the book info application, we have dependencies among the sub charts as well. So in, in here you have details and ratings with no dependencies, which means they can spin up uh, first. And then you have uh, reviews, which depends on those two uh, sub charts and then product page that depends on reviews. So kind of everything is driven through Helm. So you have the standard Helm options. Uh, you can specify what target namespace to go, go to, what over, overlay values you wanna use. Uh, in this case, we have the replica accounts that we override on the default charts and sub charts. So let me, let me create this. And quickly jump to workflow and so so what we have here is uh our uh, orchestra took in that uh the application group and it generates a, a workflow out of this so there's these dags are intermediate nodes they're not the executor containers so you have ambassadors spinning out now on the right you can see uh it's starting the ambassador pods in, with, within that and the way orchestra did the uh, generated the object for these executor containers is it, it passed in a helm release object uh, to our executor as a base 64 encoded string and uh, when you decode that it's it's just a helm release object that helm controller picks up and this executor con container down here if you look at the logs is is just waiting for the helm release to go into a, a successful state so again you have you have ambassador the the primary application that succeeded and now it's gone into a sub chart tag so so details reviews ratings and product pages are sub charts within the book info application uh since since sub charts are uh dependencies the dependencies go first before the application chart itself. Uh, the application chart may or may not have any resources being deployed, but uh, it, if, if it does, it has deployments, config maps, all of those will be created after the sub charts are deployed. So this is, uh, this is different as compared with Helm itself. When you do a Helm install, everything gets started together. Uh, orchestra kind of staggers everything out. So, so we have a successful workflow over here. I can go in and make a modification and this would be similar to uh, releases changing uh, over time and being ready and the CD picking it up. So let's go down here and change the replica set, uh, replica count. So product page to go to, say reviews go to three. So both of them should see changes and what's going to happen is this workflow is going to kick off again uh it's completely ad important uh which which means that the ones the helm, helm releases that haven't changed will not be affected at all it's just uh go, the executor container will see the helm releases it is, it is in success in a succeeded state and just uh do nothing and move on to the next pod so so now we have uh the sub chart spinning up but quickly i just wanted to show you i don't have to watch the entire thing but 
if I just look at the Helm release versions across the namespaces, um, it starts. So you'll see that reviews and product pages, the two, two applications, the two sub charts that we touched, uh, the values that we touched were moved on to revision two. Um, final thing I wanted to show is the rollback, uh, at least the delete. So, so, uh, so let, me, let me show the remediation as well. So if I go in and uh, let's say, set it at a version that doesn't exist. Um, it should roll back to the last successful spec. So this should this should fail because it couldn't find the the chart. And if we go back to it, it it'll spin it up again just to make sure everything's looking right. And if you go back to the spec, you should see that it's rolled back to version six or six below. So so that's that's another one. I'm gonna let this roll out so that I can show the reverse workflow. It should be quick. I... Let this turn green and then. Oops. I've succeeded. Uh, now I can go in and delete the application group. And what we should see is when we look at the workflows, you have a reverse workflow that's kicked off. So the, the forward workflow, if it was in the middle of uh, reconciling, would be suspended and the reversal would be started. If you go back and look at the pods, they'll be terminating in the same order as they were uh, the opposite order of how they were deployed. We have uh, book info, product pages, reviews, uh, going in the reverse order and being deleted. So yeah, that's that's what I uh, I have for the demo. Building some more uh, demo apps to show features like progressive delivery and quality gates that should be out uh, in uh, in a short while. But we are at our MVP stage, things are a lot more stable than they used to be. So feel free to play around with the with the book info app. And if you want, try it with your own applications as well. Uh, and we'd love to get some feedback. And also, if you wish to contribute, there's a lot of open open issues, uh, small and large, that, that we'd really appreciate anyone's contribution on. All right. Uh, any questions? Um, hi, thank you, Nitish. It's a really, really great presentation. Um, I have a lot of questions. <laughs> I'll, I'll start. I'll start uh, maybe with one. Um, you know, you started the presentation talking about the challenges of CNFs and uh, and, and telco workloads. Mm -hmm. I wonder how how you see orchestra directly connecting to them, and and then I'll have another question. <laughs> So, uh, so you mean the orchestration of those CNFs? Well, you, you talked about the some challenges of CNFs having to do with uh, uh, integration with the platform, with the host. Um, yeah. So uh, let me go back to this picture. So, uh, so this this is based on my experience uh, with a firm. Uh, the the way. Our, so you could you could think of our uh, the sorry the data plane component like the UPF. Uh, UPF is something in terms of the platform. If you're speaking, is uh, would need uh, would need DPDK on your platform as well. But uh, when you when you get into the Kubernetes world, there's a whole bunch of uh, CNI frameworks. You have uh, other operators like Intel building uh, features to to help with uh, some hardware acceleration, DPDK. Again, I'm, I'm not the expert on that, but I've, I've seen like these dependencies that uh, are done through Kubernetes operators. So this kind of becomes uh, uh, a prerequisite before our NFs can be deployed. You can't just go in and deploy UPF and expect it to work. So in, in that way, things need to be set up 
So, so orchestra honors that dependency DAG. So one, when you're rolling things out, it would follow that order where all the prerequisites are started. So in this case, we show uh, from the application, from the platform side, you have uh, the service mesh that needs to be up. You have uh, OPA to do uh, our mutations that we need in terms of, we do leverage it for a lot of security features. Um, and like I said, any of those, uh, from what I remember, they were like NUMA core mappers and there's some whole dynamic set of controllers that Intel builds around this. Um, so, so that, that's what I mean by orchestra handling dependencies. It's, it's agnostic to what you're deploying, but as long as you have it packaged as a Helm chart, it'll follow the DAG. Does that, does that answer your question? Uh, somewhat, yeah, I guess, I guess my follow-up is related to that. Um, so, I mean, the DAG is a feature of Argo workflows. This is not maybe specific to orchestra. And of course, one of the things you can do with Argo, you don't have to call Helm. <laughs> you could, uh, your, your tasks can be anything you want them to be, including configuration tasks, mm -hmm. things like, uh, things that you absolutely cannot do with Helm, things like, uh, uh, installing things on the host, uh, installing CNI plugins, for example, and configuring them. Um, I see Argo also were very useful or possibly useful for um, uh, solving issues with configuration, right? So it's not just deploying um, lots of Kubernetes resources, right? Because in the end, what we have here, as you showed with uh, you showed that we have all these Kubernetes resources, deployments, pods, et cetera, that, that are being deployed for us in order. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, so two issues there. One, um, I think we would all like our applications to be more cloud native in the sense that they shouldn't depend on order. That is, mm -hmm. um, things should come up and uh, if they do have dependencies, they should be autonomous in the sense that they, every component should be able to make sure that if the dependencies don't exist, then it won't do any, any work, right? Um, ideally, you'd want to be able to deploy everything declaratively mm -hmm. uh, without a workflow and, um, and uh, have everything up. But we, we, of course, reality isn't always that, yeah. <laughs> that case. One of the aspects has to do with configuration tasks, things like netconf configuration for various components, uh, things that could happen in an order, and it's useful to sometimes break them into building blocks that you can indeed put in a cyclical graph. Um, mm -hmm. But it, when, one of the problems with Helm, and um, I think Helm is very problematic, to be honest, um, is that uh, in the end, you know, it's a, it's a text templating tool, right? It, it creates a Kubernetes manifest for you in YAML, <laughs> and, and those become the, the Kubernetes resources. But, um, but, but, it, but, but we have much more that we need than just that. I think I mentioned that kind of configuration task, but mm -hmm. there are all kinds of other things, assembling, for example, clusters of components uh, maybe putting a load balancer of some sort uh, for a particular protocol uh, among them. There's it, this problem space. <laughs> I devoted a lot of time for it. I, I'll share in the chat. Some people know this. Sorry for tooting my own horn, my own horn here. But I'm, I'm working on an orchestrator called Torandot, which is uh, based on Tosca rather than the um, uh, Kubernetes manifest, and lets you create topologies with all kinds of relationships. Relationships themselves are typed in Tosca. So mm -hmm. what I see here is basically, th there's one kind of relationship, which is a dependency. <laughs> and that dependency defines order of execution. But I think there are a lot of other kinds of relationships that we, we want to create. Some of them are networking connections, but some of them are you can call them logical relationships that have to do, for example, with, as I said, load. Say, lo you want to describe a load balancer. So, you know, I, I love this visual graph mm -hmm. presentation, but this is a deployment graph mm -hmm. specifically. This is an order of deployment. 
But once you get to day two operations and changes, it's not so much about deployment, it's modifications, especially in configuration that, that are more than this. So uh, not to say that this isn't a, an important contribution, but I think uh, it addresses uh, one corner of the problem. Mm -hmm. Hey, Tal, do you have some specific questions that we can look at? Um, like if you're saying there's a specific area, how do you handle this and you don't see like you don't see that it's going to be handling, and then we can hear back some targeted questions about this. Well, uh, so, so one, yeah, I know. I, I didn't end up really making a question here, but um, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the question would be more specifically about um, how does orchestra handle tasks that are not Helm? So, I mean, it's integrated with Argo, yeah. But um, how well is it integrated with Argo? That is, if I want to define Can things. Give an example of a task um, that it wouldn't handle um, by default through Helm, so then we can yeah, examine I, that. I, I thought I gave one. So a netconf configuration. So let's say some of these components are, are running uh, a netconf agent, and they need to be configured as part of this, this entire product, right? So it's not just every individual subchart, but those components, those pods, those services might need to be configured with NetConf, right, according to a general plan. Uh, how would that integrate? Yes, yeah, so it's, it's a good question, but it's kind of outside the scope of orchestra. Uh, you're right, we only uh, address the whole uh, deployment strategy. So it's doing orchestration uh, agnostic of what kind of uh, deployments you're, you're, you're uh, trying to leverage it for. So it, it doesn't know whether you're a telco system deploying 5G applications or not. Orchestra, that's why I said it started, it started pretty, uh, uh, it, it was, it was, uh, it was built for the affirmed workloads. At that point, there, there were a lot of uh, tiebacks to configuration day two deployments, but over time we, we saw that this could be applied to any kind of application. So, so one, it's it's a generic tool. It's not. It's it's in no way uh, tied to five G. Uh, but it, it was it was built with these uh, mission critical systems that take multiple releases at a time rather than continuous delivery uh, that enterprises do. So, so it, it was built with in service upgrades in in mind. And this is this is just around the deployment aspect of it. Uh, you're right about the day two configuration. Uh, a lot of people have their own uh, proprietary stuff. We have our own proprietary stuff on how we do uh, day two configuration, which interestingly also leverages Helm, but yeah, I'm not gonna dive in. I, I don't even know too much about it because uh, I'm not the, the main person working with that, but uh, the, the, there are cases where we leverage Helm and Helm operations to to do those configuration. But with that said, uh, the the selling point of orchestra in my mind is the in-service upgrades and the the um, the kind of progressive delivery that it brings. So it's it's defense in layers. And by that, what I mean is uh, you could start at the lowest uh, layer. And again, we, we are tied to Helm today. So I'm gonna speak from that aspect. Uh, you can have Helm tests which are part of your Helm charts that the developers build. Uh, you can bring in a progressive delivery framework like Argo rollouts or Flagger, uh, in which case you have, if you're using Canary deployments, you have automated Canary analysis. So it would, it would uh, leverage service meshes to, to redirect traffic in steps and do the validation as it, as it redirects traffic to the, to the Canary pods before doing a promotion or a rollback. So that's, that's another layer. And then the third layer is uh, the introduction of Captain, which one lets you uh, do quality gates. I think the, the other feature that we, we love about Captain is that uh, it, can, it can do continuous testing for you. And in, in the 5G world, you could imagine that as, uh, as a deployment's happening for every application going in, Captain can do a call back to say an X4 server or whatever your testing framework is for your call flows. It could go kick that off, do some validation and only then promote 
the node in the DAG. Uh, so the, the application, so it'll, it'll, it'll change the node in the DAG to a green before it goes to the next uh, next node in uh, in the workflow DAG. So, so that's that's three layers. The the fourth one would be uh, bring your bring your own container executor. So now you could build your own. Uh, you could have your own script, whatever runtime you want to use. That could query. Uh, if if you were using Azure, it would go in and look at Azure Monitor or any other kind of metrics or um, behaviors that you want to test for across your system or application group, just to make sure nothing else was affected. So you can build your own. Uh, on uh, validation as well. So I, I think it's it's uh, to answer your question. It's not it's not uh, tailored to five G specifically, uh, or rather the the configuration aspect of five G, which itself uh, on its own is like a really complex task. And orchestra is not trying to address that at all. So, so I don't know that. Yeah, no, it, it answers my question fully. I think I. Um, so, so I guess that it really depends on, you know, for these tasks to turn green, <laughs> right? It means that you have to write a Helm chart that not only succeeds in deploying, but actually has some tests to make sure, to make sure that this component is up, right? This sub chart is up. So it, it's up to you to make sure that your Helm chart does the verifications that it needs mm -hmm. for the task to turn green before it just moves on. Yeah, additionally, not just checking its own state and whether it's up, it can also, so it, a lot of a lot of those NFs are interdependent, so it can go and query uh, the state of, or make make some sample calls or whatever it needs to do between uh, those, those NFs to make sure things are looking good, um, all the calls are succeeding. So it could do smaller tests there, uh, like integration tests in there, and then you have the system level test with the call flows happening using Captain. So it, it can it can look uh, look at the entire uh, topology and do some verifications across the infra across other applications running on the cluster. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Any other questions? All right, uh, so let me just share the link uh, with all of you. Um, it, it would be great to see people come in and give some feedback. And we, we love we love for contributors to, to come in and pick up some tasks as well. Space this right here. Yeah, please add the link and, and if if there's a online version of the slides, or if you can upload those somewhere, it'd be uh, Should I great. put it on the Google Drive? Yeah, put it on the, um, yeah, that Google Doc, you can add them, the links to the okay. line item for you. I'll do that, I'll do that. All right. Yeah, that's all I got. Uh, thanks for, thanks for uh, uh, letting me speak. <laughs> appreciate it yeah absolutely thanks for coming and presenting to us today mm -hmm. um that's all we had on the agenda for today so Nitish, if you can add the links to the doc just so people can find them after the meeting that'd be great um I is there any that. is there anything anyone else would like to discuss or chat about any more questions for Nitish about orchestra Um, I, I have a general question uh, regarding the agenda and the uh, the KubeCon videos that are up. Um, there are a lot of KubeCon videos. I wonder if anybody in this group can point us to some good ones having to do with uh, topics related to telco. Yeah, so I think Taylor put a couple in. So one that I recommend was the keynote from Vuk from Deutsche Telekom talking about how they're using CNCF technologies to build out their uh, 5G infrastructure. Um, Taylor also gave a talk about the CNF working group. Um, did anybody else see any talks at KubeCon that they liked or would recommend to other people?
Tal, were you able to attend KubeCon? Um, I've I've watched exactly the two uh, uh, videos recommended, <laughs> so and nothing more. Okay, I know there is also some at the Kubernetes on Edge Day Two, um, but I I'll add a link to that afterwards because I wasn't able to um, watch them. Because there's a, <laughs> a lot of things going on on the Day Zero events, but I'll add a link to the to those videos after the call too. Yeah, it's it's a bit overwhelming. <laughs> Yeah. Cool. Um, is there anything else anyone wants to discuss? Okay, I see Natish just dropped the link to uh, the slides in the uh, chat too. So um, with that, thanks everyone for coming. If you're joining the CNF working group meeting, we're gonna be starting in about eight minutes on the other Zoom call, so. Thanks everyone for joining. Cheers. Yeah.